Right now, I want to quickly talk about a Boaz. A Boaz that is talking about your character and talking about you most importantly. And I want you to ask yourself one question right now, okay? Ask yourself one question and I want you to also realize something. I welcome you to today's video, by the way. And please listen. Let me give you a story of the book of Ruth. Most of you, you know it. But the thing is, Ruth was at a position where she was trapped, you know what I'm saying? And confused because she lost her husband. There was nothing for her, but she just decided to go with the flow, following her mother-in-law, Naomi. You know, this is just also quickly uh, teaching me something individually. So, because I get to see that at times you'll reach a place where you don't know what to do with your life as if like you're stuck. Is God here or what? So I like the fact that unlike uh, that other lady, um, is it, uh, who was also married to one of the, you know, is it Oprah? Is it Oprah or Oprah or something like that? She decided to just go her way, but Ruth decided to follow her mother-in-law. Of course, she did not know whether it was a good idea or not, but she just said, you know what? Let me just go. It's almost like those situations where people will stop following you because you have nothing to offer. That's when they say when days are dark, friends are few. But some, they will follow you because they want something from you. The thing is, they wanted uh, Naomi because of his sons. That's why they stick there. They, she had something. She had sons whom they were married to. Allow me to tell you that character speaks a volume. And character will take you places. As you followed Naomi, Naomi still had relatives. And one of the relatives were like, uh, they, they, when they went back, it was Boaz whom they, they, they met when they, she went back to her place. You got what I'm saying? And because of her character, that made Boaz to recognize her. Let me tell you, your character will create ways for you. You have different kinds of Boazes in your life. And what do I mean by Boazes? I mean opportunities, things which are going to come and enter your life only to edify you only to bring you breakthrough but such can never happen when you have easily given up you have to try to push forward you have to try to do something never let go have hope be confident go ahead you know what i'm saying don't change who you are the aim of the enemy is to break us and make us to change who we are but the aim of god is to advance us further to break to build us up Further, you get what I'm saying? That is why I'm saying that at the end of the day, there will be someone that is going to notice you. Let me tell you that the problem is, it's not a matter of there is something wrong with you. There is something maybe you're not doing right. It's just a matter of there's just the wrong people who are seeing your character. It is a phase which you are at in your life at the moment. Not because you are doing wrong. No, no, no. Ask any Christian. You see, Christians, you know, one of the greatest beliefs that we've been given from the beginning, it was the fact that if you stay loyal and uh, faithful before the Lord, the things are just going to be smooth. That is why some of the people who backslide, you realize it is not a matter of they woke up and decided to backslide in Christ, but it all because when you are in the world, you feel like already that, you know what, I am not living a holy life I am all already lost, but I can't help it. But deep down in you, you feel, you believe that if I was to prove myself loyal, I hear that there is a God. A God who created us. You know what I'm saying? And if I was to live a holy life, I believe God was going to favor me, was going to love me and all these things. So then when we act upon those things, we realize that it, it blessings, they don't just come like that because I pray today. Now I have to, we realize that, come on, like that is when most people are discouraged. But the truth is all you've been told, it is true. But the part of it is not too easy. Nobody explained. And what do I mean? It does not happen with a snap of a finger. You have to hang in there. You have to prove yourself before God. He has to even physically test you. Although he already does see your heart, but he, he enjoys testing people. Because one of the ways that the enemy does, that's why Satan, he knows. Okay, let me put it like, 
one of the biggest ways in which Satan operates is in the physical. Remember, from heaven, he was thrown down to the earth. You know, woe to you who are living in the world. For Satan has been thrown down there. So you see, he came against Jesus. He tried to, te to tempt Jesus, the Lord, because he understood that his weaknesses have increased, if not have been placed. In the spirit, while Jesus was still in heaven, there was no way he was going to tempt Jesus. So it, it, let's just simply put it like, in the spirit, while Jesus was still in the heavens, or in heaven, he had no weaknesses. But now, because he was operating in the flesh, the weaknesses were the hands, the Lord could feel pain, could bleed, could sleep. You get what I'm saying? Could grow up like any normal person. He knew, let me try that out. Let me go there. Let me tell you that your character in the physical must be tested. It is one thing for God to search your heart and feel like, ah, you have a good heart and then leave it there. It is yet another thing to put your body under pressure. Hence, Abraham was tested in that manner and failed. I mean, and passed. The people who failed were the Israelites. Abraham passed. Israelites were tested as well, but they failed. God Almighty wanted to see how obedient they will be. Saul, likewise, he was tested and failed. Those men, when he selected them, it was out of favor, out of love. Even Saul, the first king of Israel, it shows that God saw the heart. He told someone, I, unlike human beings, I don't look at the physical appearance, but my focus is in the heart. Meaning, he saw the heart of Saul, but he understood that having a heart with good motives is one thing. And it's another thing to, to have a heart, to, 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 to react differently now when you are under pressure. Hallelujah. Have you ever been in a position where like you are too excited or you see somebody who is just too excited? They start promising you things. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to buy you this. Like, just like that. Even friends, once I get a job, you know, the, the first salary, I'm going to make sure I buy you this. I like how my pastor used, uh, usually like saying that before somebody started working, working was like, once I start work, uh, working, I'm going to buy you uh, some sofas, you know. And I say the person, not even a single cent. The person has just disappeared like that after they got a job. To show that people, out of excitement, they do say things. But to prove yourself, it is when you are tested and your character is revealed. And I want to tell you, your Boaz is locating you. And with your Boaz, I'm going to talk about different things. Anything good, anything that is going to acknowledge your faithfulness before God, how you are, every good thing that you have done will be honored. The Lord is rewarding you. They're going to see your character. They're going to start to observe and they're going to start to talk about it and they're going to start to reward you. Boaz saw a character and when he had to choose someone to marry in chapter 5 of Ruth, he only thought of Ruth. Her character was extraordinary. I pray for you. May God guide you and give you good opportunities and reward you greatly in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And that's all I had. My details are in the comment section below. See you next time.